Now, moving on to the CIT trials, we're working, of course, with many different centers worldwide. The National Institutes of Health, the NIH, has some major trials moving forward for islet transplantation. These are the trials that are moving forward to get a license for islet transplantation. I won't go through the details, but very simply, one of them is an islet after kidney transplant trial, and the other is an islet alone trial, and these are moving forward now. We've been testing what's called co-stimulation blockade uh, in, in, the, in a clinical trial with a, a drug called Belatacept, finding encouraging early results, and we're still analyzing the results at the present time. GLP-1 analogs, we're trying to get the islets to grow and work better after transplant. So we know that these agents, GLP-1 analogs, and a particular one called liraglutide, can uh, facilitate growth of islets. We've tested this many times in the laboratory with small and large animals. So we're now moving forward with a clinical trial to test the very same thing with this liraglutide treatment together with Novo Nordisk. We found that when we add this to the islets in culture, as well as give it to the patients afterwards, we can keep many more islets alive in the culture. So this is a very simple, exciting clinical trial. It's moving forward in 16 different international sites, including sites in Europe, the UK, the US, and Canada. And we're randomizing this. So this is a, a very important trial, a randomized trial with liraglutide and a placebo, what's called a, a, a placebo drug. And we're trying to see if we can improve the outcomes of islet transplantation in the presence of this drug. So we're very excited about this. Now, moving on to stem cells, we know that if we were to treat all the patients in the world with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, we would not have enough cells to go around. So we're testing stem cells to see if we, they can be a potential cure for diabetes. Stem cells, of course, are going to be a very important part of medicine of the future, and particularly in regenerative uh, medicine. So we've been working with a group called Novocell, or Viacite, formerly called Cythera, and this drug, th this company has developed a cell line uh, derived, derived from human embryonic stem cells that makes insulin. We've transplanted these uh, cells into, uh, into mice now and have found that we can cure diabetes in exactly the same way as they, the company showed previously. There are still are some issues with this kind of treatment because they form these lumps uh, when you do the transplant or, or teratomas. And we're working on ways in the laboratory now to try and switch off these teratomas and control them better. And one of the approaches we're using uh, is to see if we can put these cells in, what, under the skin instead of into the liver where they could be potentially be removed. So we're, we're using a collaboration with an, another company called Sonova to develop a subcutaneous device for transplant. This is the device. It goes uh, under the uh, skin in a very simple uh, approach. It's made of a sort of plastic material. There are silicone rods that go in it initially. You can see here a little pocket is placed under the skin. Simple uh, surgery doesn't require a general anesthetic. It can be done under local. That's placed under the skin. And then we wait a couple of weeks or so, and new blood vessels grow into this system. And as the blood vessels grow in, then we go back in, and we pull these rods out at a certain time point, and then we're ready to put the islet cells into the subcutaneous device. We think that can be a, a, a very important opportunity for us because it would allow us to image the cells better. It would allow us to manipulate the cells and maybe transplant other cells that can control rejection together with the islets. And so these are the cells going in there now at the transplant. And so I, you know, I'm very optimistic about this approach, and I think it could allow, also allow us to transplant far fewer islets. And of course, these, all of these strategies I'm telling you about can be combined together. So we can use the caspase inhibitors together with this. We could use the stem cell transplants together with this. And I, I think uh, over time, we're going to see how this goes. So this is moving forward now. And again, in a couple of months, it's just undergoing the ethics board review right now and Health Canada review. And I anticipate being able to start that trial uh, very shortly. So I think that's a, a, an opportunity for us as well. And the, this company has very exciting data to suggest that cells engraft far more efficiently uh, in that site. So I see this as a platform technology to be able to uh, transplant our cells in a skin site that could work as well as the liver, but also allow us to test uh, other stem cell ther therapies in this approach that wouldn't be safe to put in the liver. And at the same time, we can manipulate the cells to stop rejection and get tolerance. So I think we're ready for a randomized trial against uh, uh, with, with patients with type 1 diabetes uh, versus islet transplantation. I think this therapy really is safe enough today to consider this uh, as an opportunity, and I'm sure we will be doing that uh, very soon. So on behalf of our team in Edmonton and uh, our research team, thank you, f we, thank you for, for listening to me. We definitely need your help as we move these trials forward and as we move forward in the basic science laboratory. If we're going to get a cure tomorrow and a treatment today, we don't just do that with, with no resources. We need your help. We need your resources. We need funding. So if you can help us, please do. Thanks for your attention.